Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the incredibly fun holiday movie, Christmas Bloody Christmas. We are joined today by cast members Riley Dandy and Sam Delich. And, and for both of you, obviously, we're, we're meeting your characters in a very specific context where we see them together as co-workers. We get to meet some of their friends. Um, you know, we meet a couple of family members, but there's also so many details in terms of their day-to-day -day life that inform who they are on screen that we're not experiencing in those scenes because it is taking place in the scope of one evening uh, <laughs> yeah. on Christmas Eve. And so I was interested for both of you in, in kind of how in depth or how much of a deep dive you wanted to do on your characters beyond what was on the page in terms of just framing out a lot of their backstory or family history that inform who they are for audiences. Do you want to, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah, Riley. Um, I, a big, a big part for me was, uh, just because you do briefly see Tori's sister, I was like, well, I have to figure out what this relationship is, what their relationship is with their father. Cause I, she briefly mentions in the film that she can only spend one night at her dad's house and that's it. And I'm like, why is that? So I did a pretty extensive, like little family tree and background situation. Um, cause that also helped inform, uh, how Tori would feel when things go south with her sister. So that was important for me. What about you, Sam? Uh, well, I'm not American. So the first thing was uh, trying to be American. Um, yeah, and I, I did very similar to you, Riley. You know, I fleshed out his backstory, all his motivations, where he, you know, why why he wanted to be with, with Tori. Um, yeah, and just kind of like, what it's like to live in a small town. I mean, I'm from Perth originally in Western Australia, so pretty isolated. So in some way, sort of similar to, to these characters stuck in a small town. So I just use as much of a, my personal life as I could to kind of bring it in there. Yeah, no, that, that's really great. And and Riley, for you, you know, your character has such such a carefree attitude and and such an such a <laughs> vibe about her, which is I don't need to exist in the world in the way that society wants to pigeonhole me. Yeah. Um, and so did you find that that kind of attitude and expression of herself quite early on when you were reading the script pages, or how did you how did you want to manifest that into her? Yeah, a hundred percent. I um I think that was something that both Joe and I, like upon even first meeting, we like met up for coffee um, beforehand. And I think that was something that he and I were both pretty in line with from the beginning was that like, she she does very much march to the beater of her own drum. And um, that's something that I have always done, but not to the extent that she does. And so I think that that like naturally came out as I was exploring her because like, she's way more badass than I ever will be. And so just the fact that I was like able to like make that fully fledged while I was playing her, um, I think just came out cause I, I wanted it to, <laughs> like, it was just like, this is my opportunity to do it. So why not? You know? And, and Sam, you know, in the dynamic of the two of them, it feels like, you know, Tori's a little bit more of the cynic and Robbie's a little bit more of the optimist at certain times. And so as you were coming through through the scripts, what what were the details that you really cottoned onto that were telling you a lot about his overall personality and the way that he expresses himself in the world? Uh, his absolute persistence uh, was the biggest thing. I think you're right. You're right. The optimism. I think he every uh, every scenario, every um every time Tori throws something back at him, you know, like, oh, you're not going to get laid or you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that. He finds another way in uh, throughout the entire film. Um, so I think, yeah, the biggest thing for me was, was his absolute persistence. And, and Joe was great with that. Most of it was all in the writing as well. And then, you know, me and Riley just flushing out that dynamic. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and in terms of the two of you fleshing out that that dynamic, you know, obviously I know this was an incredibly fast shoot. You had to kind of jump into scenes fairly quickly. Did you have much opportunity before you even started filming? Because right from the get-go, even just the pacing and the rhythm that you have to have in terms of the dialogue and the exchanges that they're having has to feel like every single time they have a conversation, this is just their natural flow with one another. And they've, <laughs> they've been at this for years. Um, we met the day of filming, didn't we? Yeah, the oh, day wait. before. The day before filming, we went and had a beer. We had a beer, beer the day before, met met Joe as well. Yes. Um, and then I think the first day of filming, we saw each other and we were like asking each other like silly questions to like get to know each other. Yeah. Um, 
And then we were just kind of thrown into it, weren't we? Yeah, we were really thrown into some of uh, it was the first things we shot were scenes in the middle of the movie in the in the in um Tori's house. Mm-hmm. The really high energy scenes, uh, playing drunk was day one. Um, and so I think, yeah, but I think the best thing about being thrown into the deep end is yeah, you're forced to just play. And yeah. I think that's what me and Riley uh did really well together. And we kept saying throughout the whole thing, we were like. Thank God we like each other. It would have been a completely different experience if we didn't actually get along. A hundred percent. And I think we've, we've both done shoots with, with um, actors that, yeah, you you might not have the best personal relationship with, or they might be a bit difficult. And this was, yeah, it was an absolute blessing. I think, you know, me and Riley, yeah, from the get go, the chemistry was there. So it was great. I love that. And and Sam, you were saying just there that that was also when you met Joe. Was that the first time that you got to kind of sit down with him in person and and talk about any elements of the movie? We'd had a a couple of Zoom calls. So, you know, he had had sent me material in sort of reference to the tone of the film. So we weren't, um, did the same for Riley, uh, so we weren't going in blind. He made us both Spotify playlists, which was great. Um, but you can't really suss the dynamic of a shoot until you're actually on set with everything around you. But yeah, Joe was again, from the get go, super collaborative and super open to our suggestions. And so that was also a breath of fresh air. I think being able to feel safe in his hands and know that, uh, if a take doesn't go the way he wants, that's fine. He's just going to find those happy accidents. I mean, I, I love that you're also bringing up there the tone of the film because it is very specific in terms of the execution, the energy to it, the way that it's approaching the horror genre, the way that it's circumventing holiday movies. You know, there's so many different specific things that it's doing. Um, and so what what were the most helpful indicators that he gave you both in terms of what that was going to be through those conversations or even just the type of music that he was sending you as part of that Spotify playlist? Right. Movies, movies was a big one for me. Um, like I, I, much to Joe's dismay, I had not seen a lot of the, um, like slasher films from like the eighties and nineties. And, um, he gave me a full extensive list on movies that I needed to watch. And so I just had this day of prep where I just like curled up, got super cozy, had a cup of tea and just watched slasher films all day. Um, and it was super, super helpful, um, because it really did inform me so much about who Tori was. Uh, and so obviously as helpful as music is, I feel like I'm a little more well-versed in music to like be able to find that on my own. Whereas the films that he provided were very, very helpful and telling for me. And for you, Sam? Uh, exactly the same. Yeah, just the sort of films and the sort of throwback uh, 80s slasher dynamic that we were sort of playing with and... And yeah, all the all the bands we reference in the in the film. I mean, I I think I speak for Riley as well, where some of them I hadn't heard of before. Um, you know, a lot of obscure metal bands. Um, and so just hearing that and him going, look, the soundtrack is going to be similar to this. This is the sort of fun element we're playing with. Like, yeah, and that that made me feel like, oh, great, okay. I can push Robbie to a level that maybe is a little more than what I thought was on the page. Yeah. And also just to touch on the music (laughs) again, I remember, I think it was like the second or third day of filming. Sam and I both showed up to set and they were playing like really like hardcore metal music on set. And it's so funny because like the first week or so of filming, that was so, it was jarring for both of us because we were like, Mm. you know, it's, it's just a different um vibe than we're used to in our personal lives and by the end of the shoot that music was so natural to listen to and it like I really grew to enjoy it and so I think I think a big takeaway from this shoot for both of us probably is like that we've become like more well versed in that world a little bit which is kind of cool I, I agree with Riley. I think, uh, you know, most shoots, it's like you're in your trailer and then you're taking a set and there's, a, you know, people everywhere, small vibe on set, you do your thing. But this, the entire atmosphere of the shoot had this, the uh, sort of soul of this film in it. Yeah. So the crew were listening to that music, the cast are, everyone is. And I think that 
whole atmosphere really helped bring all our characters to life. Yeah. And also in terms of cultural references, so much of the dialogue between your characters, you know, their their center connection is working in a music store. And so they're both incredibly passionate, have so many opinions. And so as you were both going through the scripts and really looking at, okay, what bands are they listening to? What movies are they watching? But also what are their opinions? Why do they like this movie more than that? Why do they think that this band cutting their hair changed their music? Um, <laughs> and all those different dialogues that they're having, like how did that help you in terms terms of figuring out who these people were in you know off of the page what uh, I was like yeah Sam um I think I really think the I've been saying that like a way for me to get into Tori was her passion she's very passionate about everything that she talks about um and so whether or not I agreed or like knew the things that she was passionate about or felt you know, whether or not I felt passionate about the same things, I do feel passionate about other things in my own life. And so like, I was able to understand why she had these views and why at this time she felt this way about it. Because like, we've all been there when we're trying to explain someone something and someone's not getting it. And so like, I think half of it's like bringing your own frustration to that. And then half of it is like realizing that someone doesn't agree with your opinion on something that you think is fucking great. And that's frustrating. So that was, I mean, my way in for that, for myself. And for you, Sam? Uh, honestly, exactly the same. The frustrations <laughs> that, yeah, I, I think frustration is the, the, a great <laughs> word for that. I think just, oh, yeah. Honestly, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, frustration. <laughs> I love it. And, and Sam, you were also mentioning earlier that some of the scenes that you filmed first together were at the center of the film, which is obviously as they've been going out for the evening, you know, having some drinks mm -hmm. at the record store, going to the toy store to see their friends, having some more drinks, going to the bar, smoking a little. Um, and so one of the levels that you have to, to both figure out in your performances is, okay, based on how much they've drunk, you know, how are they responding to things or, you know, what is their, their tipsy personality? What is their drunk personality? Um, okay. Now, they're making nachos like what does that look like at this stage of the night um and so how did you set about finding for each of your characters what's the dynamic at each of those stages of inebriation for them mm. I, I I personally actually marked out in the I got the whole screenplay and I marked out level of drunk and level of high throughout the uh throughout the movie so yeah like I said I think some of the first scenes were like a you know a nine or a ten out of ten um but yeah I just made sure that every little scene had some slight variance, you know, towards the start, it's a little more mellow. And then obviously when we're in the house and we're arguing about horror movies or, or bands, it's, you know, it's really, really ramped up. I mean, for me, it was just, it was just that. And as long as I filtered that into my preparation, then I felt pretty, pretty fine. Yeah. I, I think um, for me, it was a little bit different because I, I do feel like Tori just kind of functions like that. And um like, I, you know, I know people in my life that function very well like that. And so um, for me, it was like, like kind of cherry picking which places I want to show a little bit of like a little too inebriated um, just because I feel like Tori's one of those people that, you know, she can be two drinks in or 17 drinks in and you can't really tell the difference. I, I know people like that. Um, I think we all know someone like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for me, it was just like being mindful that like, sh you know, she's got some shit to take care of, so she can't be too loosey goosey. I love that. And, and Riley as well, when we first essentially meet the, the robo Santa that's coming after them in this movie, you know, your character is kind of the audience's window into experiencing yeah. it for the first time as well. Um, and so what was the dynamic that you wanted to play to in that scene, knowing, you know, obviously this is my character's response, but also this is the first time that the audience are seeing it. So your reactionary shots in that moment are just as important as us seeing the Santa coming towards her and take, you know, taking people's lives across the street. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, it's just like playing up the shock. And like, I, I do feel like in moments of shock, we, our brain tries everything to make an excuse for what's happening. And so like, I think the, the innate moment of like, holy, like, did that just happen? Oh my God, that just happened. Oh my God, that just happened. Okay. We have to go. Like, um, and I really didn't want to come across too like 
scream queenie. I just wanted to be like, we've got people in the house. We got to go. Um, and I, I really didn't want her to feel like a, you know, like a, someone that was like helpless. I wanted, I wanted her to be like, all right, this is happening. So we've got to go and like make the plan, you know? And you were talking at the beginning as well about the the relationship with her sister being part of how you were mapping out the inroads of the character and why that was an important dynamic to her. You know, that's kind of the first place that she wants to go is to make sure that her sister is okay. Yeah. And then obviously she's also trying to take care of Robbie. And so was it important to you to also have moments and details and actions that really expressed, you know, as much as she sometimes gives this, I, you know, very carefree attitude into the world that actually she is very committed and very passionate and very forthright with the people that matter to her. Totally. She's like, she, it's funny. Cause she's like definitely a bit of a lone wolf, but I think her, her circle is very, very small, but I think she loves her circle very passionately. Um, and that's why it's so heartbreaking with Sam's character as well is cause like she does let him in and he's one of the few people that does get her. Um, and un- unfortunately it just doesn't, doesn't end up working out. Uh, but yeah, as far as, no, as, far as <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Sam. No, I said, no, it doesn't work out. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but yeah, with the, with the sister dynamic, I definitely wanted to like show that she does have a heart and she does care about her sister and um there's history there even if you didn't care about your sister if they're staying at your house and there's a murderous robot I'd hope that someone would be like yeah I should probably get you yeah (laughs) like maybe you should come with us yeah (laughs) and for you for you Sam you know in in that dynamic with Tori for you was, you know, th- when they end up hooking up, did you kind of want it to be, he's, he's actually the one that wants this to be a little bit more, or were you kind of allowing him to be in that more carefree, you know, this is just this moment tonight space still, which is kind of where Tori's coming at it from. Uh, look, I think he very much wants to go all the way. Uh, that was his goal from the start. Uh, and I think, you know, as, I mean, I don't want to give away uh, the film too much for anyone that hasn't, hasn't seen it all, but um, I think, you know, he expects that it will continue uh, until chaos ensues. Um, but look, I, I, I played it very much like I want to get laid tonight. I'm going to get laid, and then when it starts happening, yeah, I, I, I sort of felt this, this, uh, this like he actually has a weird. Although he's goofy in doing it, he has a weird confidence that takes over, uh, which I think is a surprise for the audience because for the first kind of half of the film, he's almost hopeless in his pursuit <laughs> you know and, and Riley was talking about with with Tori that that fight or flight instinct and what kicks in and so what was your delineation of figuring out for Robbie how does how is he going to respond to this situation because there's so many different ways that you can play scenarios like that totally I think uh going back to I think going back to that sort of optimism thing you said although I wouldn't say I played optimistic I think you very much in scenarios with, with horror or anything high stakes, you sort of have to play to win. So instead of playing the, oh, I'm terrified, bad things are happening, you sort of have to play, how do we get out of this situation? A, B, C, D. Um, and so I think, yeah, I, I just tried to, similar to the drunk thing, just gauge the moments of, of how terrified is he or, or how, how strong does he have to be? You know, for example, there's a, there's a scene where I'm pulling Riley up and, trying to get her into the car. Uh, she's having a bit of a moment. It's like, right, and in that moment, the sort of dynamic shifts where I sort of become the leader for a second and she sort of becomes a follower, if that makes sense. So it was about that sort of, that power play. Yeah. And as they're both, you know, literally fighting for their lives against this, this robo Santa that's coming towards them, you know, one of the things that's really great is they're not trained fighters. They're not trained killers and so the stunt work in it and those sequences feel very realistic to these characters in terms of they're just very scrappy and they're (laughs) able to be you know there's a lot of ingenuity in terms of how they're thinking about how to get out of these situations and different props and different things that they can use around them to try and get out of this situation um and so kind of for both of you again how did you how did you work with joe to really figure out what would their skill set look like how would they respond in this situation and what's that going to look like as we work through these stunt sequences that that was a you you have used so many of the same words that i've been using whenever i talk to anyone about this is that is these are not 
trained people at all. And like, and when you said the word scrappy, I was like, that's what I've been saying to everyone. Cause like, it's just making shit work because you're fighting for survival and it may not look pretty, but you're going to get it done. Um, and I think Joe, like each sequence has been ruminating up in his head for so long and he's so specific on what he wants to see. And so he's kind of choreographed it all in his head. And, um, he and Josh, our producer, uh, are both really incredible when it comes to getting that out of Joe's head. Um, and like very clear with what they want, but still give us the freedom to find other things to add. Um, and it's kind of like, oh, well, we want to get here. We don't care how you get there. You just have to get here. Um, so I, I think that makes any of the like action scenes quite fun because you're just figuring it out with the characters. And how did you figure out what, what Robbie was going to look like in those situations, Sam? Having never been in that scenario, as I don't think anyone has. Um, <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> you've got to really yeah. figure out, okay, what, like, it's just, you just go back to what would I do, that sort of thing. And, and, and as much as Robbie is very different to me, there's a lot of similarities. And I think, yeah, it's scrappy is a great word to use. I think you just fight and you just fight and you fight and you fight and you fight. And I did think with Robbie, the thing that me and Joe played with was particularly some scenes when I get in the car um, after our first sort of altercation, you know, not like he's just, he's actually freaking out. And it's the first time that it's, it's all a little bit too much. And I think having those moments of being overwhelmed really helped. Um, and just, yeah, trying to, I think, I think me and Riley worked really well in the sense of, and, and it was written like this as well as just calming each other down. So one freaks out, the other one has to be strong. Then, then the other one freaks out, then the other one has to be strong. So it's just that kind of back and forth. And I think, um, yeah, I look honestly like anyone would react if uh, a robot Santa was trying to kill you. And and what actually were the mechanics of of how that was working on set? Was it was it a suit that someone was in, or did you have something to play off of and act against? They so when before all of the mechanics are showing, um, it's Abraham Ben Ruby, who's an incredible actor. He's about six five and just a tree of a human, and and terrifying in that sense. Um, also, a, may I add, a gentle giant, probably oh, one of the sweetest actors yeah. I've ever worked with. Yeah, he's like, he's a, an absolute teddy bear of a human. Um, but, you know, physically, when he's in Santa mode, he's yeah. quite terrifying. Um, and then when it moves into the kind of run down version of the robot where you get to see the mechanics, um, our, our special effects team actually built an animatronic robot. So all of the gears were working and the the jaw was grinding and skin flaps were hanging and it was pretty disgusting and that was terrifying in a, in that own right as well and and Riley as well you have you have a whole sequence where you're squaring off against the the mechanical version of the santa yeah. and that's your only scene partner for a lot of extensive setups back at the store um and so how did you go into those scenes where in essence it really is just at that point using your performance using your reactions the the scrappiness that you were talking about and really finding how you can raise the tension and raise the stakes for the audience as well at the same time yeah so i think um having practical effects is very, very helpful because you're not acting across from a tennis ball. You're like, you actually have a robot coming after you. And so that kind of takes care of half of it on its own because you don't actually have to imagine anything. It's right there. The overhead sprinklers are on, it's freezing, covered in blood. Like it's the stakes already feel quite high because it's actually happening to you. Um, and then there's obviously like mechanical things that sometimes you don't, prepare for. So because of that, you just have to make sure that like you're on top of your stuff so that anything else has room to breathe or malfunction or whatever. Um, yeah. I hope that answered your question. It did. Yeah. You know, and did you find as well that along the way, even just little things like how much blood does my character have on, on her face from other people that that also helped in terms of calibrating aspects of your performance? Yes. Our makeup designer was absolutely incredible. Um, she had to do so much upkeep and, you know, continuity photos with the blood and every single day it was 
a work of art watching her looking at the photos and saying like, oh, you got blasted in the face with a blood cannon yesterday and it, you know, sprayed this way and this way and this way. And so like taking every little piece and making sure that it matched. Um, and then sometimes we'd have to like wash all the blood off and film a scene from the beginning of the movie really quick. And then she'd have to do it again the same day. And I, I can never give her enough credit. Her name's Kat. She's amazing. That's amazing. And for, for both of you in making this film, what ended up being the most challenging aspects of it with everything that you've been talking about that went into each of your characters and each of your performances? For me, the night shoots were really hard. Um, we were going to bed at about 8 a.m. every day. Uh, that And as much as that, that does influence your kind of, the vibe of the film and your character and things like that. But I think towards the end of shooting, I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I was pretty fatigued. Um, as, as, as much as you can get into a rhythm of doing that, just week on week on week, your, your body starts to be like, oh, I, I, I don't know up from down right now. Um, so for me, that was certainly the biggest challenge. For you, Riley? Um, I, think, I think maintaining the physical stamina, um, just because, uh, you know, I'm in pretty much every scene and being sure to be like, to honestly, it was just like taking care of my physical well being as much as I could so that I had the physical stamina to do two months of night shoots. Like Sam was saying, like it's, you know, it's not easy, um, but it's so much fun. So you're like enjoying it so much while it's happening. Um, but I just, I was really stressed about making sure that I was like healthy the whole time. I was just like taking vitamin D cause we weren't seeing the sun. So taking vitamin D and vitamin C and staying on top of, you know. Gotta get your vitamins in, very important. You do, you, you really do. do. And I, I agree, vitamin D, I agree. Vitamin D, <laughs> eating as, you know, I, it, does, it doesn't matter if it's the biggest production in the world or the smallest production in the world. Set food is sometimes set food. So you really have to, and when you're offset, eat as healthy as you can. Yeah. And water. You guys made fun of me for my huge gallon of water, but I brought a gallon Gotta of stay water hydrated. every single day and I was hydrated. So I had my, my little greens powder. That, that helped a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's just staying healthy. It. <laughs> sometimes, it's, sometimes it's the small details that, that make the biggest it difference. Is. Yeah. Like no one's going to want to hear either of our answers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Vitamin D, greens powder, water. Greens powder. Yeah. Well, it was, it was such an enjoyable film to watch and I really, really enjoyed both of your performances in it. So thank, thank you, you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Great to see you again. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Thank you.